Thank you very much, Rishi, for this opportunity to uh, talk in detail about the Target A trial. So uh, in the beginning, I want to show the list of uh, authors of the latest papers. This is the writing committee, uh, and these are acknowledgments to all the patients, clinicians, and staff at these 33 hospitals in uh, 11 countries who took part in Target A trials. Um, and this is the International Steering Committee and then the NIHR HD appointed trial steering committee, a picture taken in 2019 when we didn't have to wear any masks. And these are the uh, authors of the latest papers. And this is my co potential conflict of interest. Um, and so I, my story started here in this. I mean, the story about this started uh, back when I was in Tata Memorial Hospital in India, uh, when I had to tell patients you have breast cancer. And the next stage was, can you stay in Bombay for six weeks? Because you have to have post-operative radiotherapy because your cancer is small, we can do a lumpectomy. But if they said yes, we could do conserve the breast. But if they said no, we have to say, OK, this is a package deal. If you can't stay for the radiotherapy, you have to have a mastectomy. And I thought this was a unique problem to India. But I later found out how three miles from UCSF in USA, people don't want to cross the Bay Bridge and they're too poor to not have their day job in county hospitals to go for the radiotherapy. This is a problem in Australia. It's a problem in Denmark. It's a problem in UK. And in the UK, you can see these red dots. These red dots are 13 miles radius around any radiotherapy center. And beyond those 13 miles, people have to travel more than 26 miles every time they have to go. And you can see how there is concentration below, but a lot of green areas, particularly in the north of England. And even in London, when there are more centers, the traveling actually takes more than an hour to any radiotherapy center. So this is a problem that persists. So this concern about patients with breast cancer, and simultaneously, I did whole organ analysis of mastectomy specimens, which suggested to me that although breast has other cancers, most recurrence around is around the index quadrant. And that led to the hypothesis that we could give radiotherapy only around the primary tumor. And this um, concern and the laboratory evidence made us think about giving radiotherapy to the tumor. We conceived the idea of giving radiotherapy. We collaborated with the industry to create a device to give this new technique and did initial pilot studies followed by randomized clinical trials. So uh, this is a uh, this is a photograph of the first patient done on 2nd of July 1998. So we have been doing it for many years. The second photograph is taken in Italy, where a patient is having the radiotherapy. And in the photographs at the bottom, you see Professor Michael Baum and Professor Jeffrey Tobias, with whom we did this, uh, started this technique. For the surgeons in the audience, the technique is actually quite simple and easy to learn. And in our trial, patient, people had to do five cases. Uh, supervised to make sure they are good to do it and then they could randomize patients in the trial uh, as opposed to 30 or 25 which were required for the central node biopsy. So this is a quick uh, learning and what is important here is that is the tumor bed after the tumor is excised and the purse string is taken just under the skin leaving about 8 to 10 millimeters from the skin uh, or you can reflect the skin away so you can put it away like that. The sphere applicator goes in the place where the tumor was and gives the radiation to the tissues that have the highest risk of local recurrence. And I'll show you a small video uh, in which uh, you can see this. Um, you can see the suture being taken at a correct depth uh, after the tumor is excised. And uh, when the purse string is completed, in the next stitch, the purse string will have completed. So you can see there it is uh, going through at the correct level and so that the tumor the bed is opposing to the applicator's spherical surface. So then you create this surface and then you insert the applicator uh, in the in the tumor bed in this manner. And then you tie the purse string uh, and give the radiotherapy. So, uh, sorry. So this was developed in UCL between 96 to 98. The applicator goes in the tumor bed. Radiotherapy is delivered immediately after lumpectomy. It is focused to the tumor bed and targets tissues at highest risk of relapse. It avoids normal structures such as heart and the lung. And we never really imagined that would make a big difference, but it finally did. So the principle is precision and immediacy, and it is individualized. So we choose the applicator 1.5 to 5 centimeters in size according to the size of the tumor bed. So you can choose the correct size of the applicator to, the, to fit the correct tumor bed. 
and I've been doing it during COVID times using all the COVID gear because uh, I failed the mass test, so I have to have this one. And that's how it looks in the operation theater. OK, and this picture is from Korea, actually, South Korea. Uh, so we published the technique in 2000 and in the early 2000s, and we published the first 25 patient results in 2001. And we said, well, actually, no point in keep doing the same thing again and again. We should do a randomized clinical trial. So we set up the randomized clinical trial. We published the protocol in the Lancet. <laughs> And uh, we started randomizing, asking the question, can risk adapted single dose target IORT during lumpectomy effectively replace three to six weeks of post-operative radiotherapy? And 2,298 patients have been randomized. The eligibility was straightforward. It was anybody over 45 years with unifocal invasive ductal carcinoma. Tumor size should be less than three and a half centimeters, up to three and a half centimeters. And MRI was not required. Only five or six percent patients did an MRI in the trial. So MRI is not required for entry into the trial and therefore not, not to have it as standard of care. Patients from 10 countries recruited in this trial. We started in 2000, so we have now long follow up. The random allocation was risk adapted radiotherapy. So 80 percent we expected to get only target IORT and everybody else the randomized to the control arm of everybody getting standard whole breast radiotherapy. The first paper was published in 2010 in the Lancet, and they put our um, conclusion on their front page. The second paper, including survival analysis, was published in 2013, and we were waiting for long-term follow-up. And while we were waiting for these results, we wanted to check, and I want to tell you about the obvious benefits, which we may think are obvious, but they have been confirmed in these studies. Firstly, cosmetic outcome. Cosmetic outcome with target IORT is superior, and this is not a surprise because less part of the breast gets radiated and less amount of tissue gets a very high dose of radiation. The quality of life is superior. These are studies in Germany and in Australia where radiation related quality of life as well as um, breast related quality of life are superior with target IORT. Pain is less with target IORT and arm symptoms are fewer with target IORT. This is a study done in Denmark. And what about patient preference? And this is a really important point. And patients would prefer target IORT and doctors would prefer IORT if they were patients. And these are studies both in Australia and in the US. And a very recent paper published in from US, published in March, showed that 75% of patients over the age of 75. So this is the study published on 9th of March where they were offering IORT. And what they found is that if they were offered, these are patients over 65, where I find to my surprise, not surprise, quite uh, that people are not being offered radiotherapy. So here, 75% of the patients chose target IORT, 14% opt opted for whole breast radiation, 5% only, actually, when given a choice, chose not to have any radiotherapy to the breast at all, and 6% chose a mastectomy. So patients prefer it, and this is an important point. Target IORT is cost saving. So this is a study from US where the savings is in billions over five years. In UK, the saving is less because cost of external radiotherapy is less, and this is NHS savings. About nine million pounds per per year in the UK would be. Uh, this is from this is published by HTA. This is published in BNJ Open, and this does not include environmental, patient, and societal cost, and that is this one. It reduces patients' travels to the hospital, and this was a paper published in BMJ Open in which we looked at during the target A trial and during the patients treated in Harlow and in Swindon, how much did patients save? And this video was taken by Mr. Co uh, Mr. Coombs, uh, the surgeon there, while traveling from uh, a patient's home to Oxford, from Swindon to Oxford, and what a perilous journey patients have to make every day for three to six weeks, or between five, seven to 15 days, even if you use five-day radiotherapy. And on average, 500 and 750 miles of travel would be saved and we may also make a dent on the global warming if we start using this as standard of care. There is another biological impact here and this is scary for surgeons and this was a fluid collecting in the breast wound after surgery. Now you all we all know that after the surgery body wants to heal and it creates lots of cytokines and chemicals which are secreted in the fluid in order to promote healing. And this group in Italy, uh, Dr. Samuele Masarut, Gustavo Baldassare, and Barbara Belletti did a study in which they put this fluid on breast cancer cell lines, and we found that it actually stimulated proliferation, motility, and invasiveness. But the beauty was, if you have wound fluid taken after patient had target IORT, 
it impaired this. So an example here is this graph shows how this is the middle point is when there is stimulation and this is if patients have had IORT. The top graph here, top figure shows cells moving fast. Uh, these are cancer cells bathing in wound fluid and you can see they are moving around here, but the movement is much less if they're bathing in fluid after having had target IORT. And there is a big difference, about 25 or 30 cytokines are different between these fluids. And this may have big impact later on. So really, does it work? And this was the randomized trial, and breast cancer has a long natural history. So we knew it worked in the short term. Does it work in the long term? And for this, we kept the bar really high for completeness of follow-up. We said follow-up would be considered complete, and we would not unblind the trial until 95% patients had at least five-year complete follow-up, and 90% patients had either 10-year follow-up or had been seen within the last year. So uh, we are really quite sure about our data uh, completeness, and that was possible only because of people collaborating from around the world and in the trial center at UCL. So when the trial was published, target A, and this is a figure from the BMJ, had the highest number of patients with the longest follow-up in partial breast radiation trials of invasive breast cancer. Each of these bar represents the number of patients with that many years of follow-up. So this is for five years and that is for 12 years. And you can see in each bar, almost all trials are better than other PBR trials. So we have seen the advantages of target IORT. Um, it is completed at the same time. There's less travel, which is particularly important during COVID times. It's good cosmetic outcome, less pain, fewer complications and lower toxicity. And uh, people have seen a large number of cases being treated during COVID times. But what is the patient thinking? Patient is thinking, what is my chance of living without the cancer coming back? This is the most important aspect that all trials have showed is important for the patient. And now are the results. And you can scan these uh, with your phone and get to the main papers here. Uh, so if you put a shoot your camera to these uh, QR codes, you'll get to these papers directly. And they've been published in the BMJ and the British Journal of Cancer recently. Um, and these are the results. So we find that for local control, in terms of local recurrence survival and invasive local recurrence survival, there is no difference. The kaplan my curves are on top of each other. In terms of breast preservation, that is mastectomy-free survival, there is no difference. In terms of distant disease-free survival, there is no difference between the two arms of the trial. In breast cancer mortality, and this is a magnified graph, shows that the two lines are overlapping and there's no difference in survival from breast cancer at all. But the finding which we had back in 2013 has again been confirmed that there is a significant and substantial reduction in non-breast cancer mortality when you give intraoperative radiotherapy uh, as a risk-adapted technique compared with external beam radiotherapy. And that leads to a separation of lines for overall mortality, but the numbers are not enough to make it significant. But you can see the target line is below the mortality for the EBRT line consistently, and it seems to be separating more and more with time. And this difference is mostly due to a difference in cardiovascular, disease, lung problems, and other cancers. So long-term results from 2,228 patients, one of the, it's actually probably the one of the largest surgical oncology and radiation oncology trials to ask this question, uh, have shown that no difference in any breast cancer outcomes and a substantial reduction in non-breast cancer deaths by 4.4%. And if this reduction was present for any drug, its stocks would rise exponentially. The second paper published in Bridge of Cancer last month had more detailed analysis of subgroups. And what we found in terms of local control, we find that it is very similar in all subgroups of patients. So it works in all patients. And what is important to remember here is that 60% patients were under 65, 20% of grade three, 22% were good, not positive, and 19% were ER or PR negative. And these numbers actually are between 400 to 500 such patients, which is a large number of patients in these high risk groups. So there was comparable local control in every sum, sum, subgroup. And in terms of overall survival, it was comparable, but in grade one or two cancers, in fact, it was superior overall survival. And these are the graphs that show overall survival improvement in 1,000, nearly 1,800 patients of grade one, grade two cancers, where the significant uh, improvement in overall survival by about from 11% 
to 15%. And this is, uh, that is mortality reduction from 15% to 11%. It didn't make any difference in grade three cancers, so it is safe to use in grade three cancers uh, without any concern. Now, this is another question that we have answered in this paper. People are always worried about relapse after local recurrence because the four is to one ratio. And uh, if there is local relapse after external beam radiotherapy, it does translate into distant uh, of distant disease and death in longer term. And that has been repeatedly shown in the ABCTCG overview from Oxford. What was found when the study was this. This graph has four lines. And what we see is this is the long term hazard if there's a local recurrence after ABRT, which is consistent with all historical data about local recurrence after ABRT. But what we found is local recurrence after target IORT is the same as if they had no local recurrence. So long term hazard of death, breast cancer death and distant disease is no different if patients get local recurrence after target IORT. So this is a very reassuring finding about patients uh, about uh, target IORT. So the prognosis remains good even if there's a relapse. Now does avoiding, why? what is the reason for getting known breast cancer deaths? It is target versus EBRT. So remember this was a risk adapted approach. So some patients in this trial got only target. And there we find this is a comparison between only target versus external beam. 899 patients, we find significant reduction. So this reduction is likely to be because of avoidance of external beam radiotherapy. But what about giving target and EBRT? Now this difference would appear only because of giving target. And why are we thinking about this? Is because there have been emerging evidence over the last 10 years that giving high dose, single dose of radiation has an abscopal effect. By abscopal means away from the site of local radiation. This has been even seen in glioblastoma. So this seems to cause an immunological reaction stimulating immunology against cancer cells or other factors, other causes of death. And so this is this is tested in this non-randomized spanner, which suggests that there may be an abscopal effect. Even if you give external beam radiotherapy, there are fewer non-breast cancer deaths. And this is statistically significant. And the way to test this would be in a randomized trial, which is actually currently running in a target B trial, which I'll come to at the end of the talk. So the first paper was published in 2010, where this was the headline that for selected patients with early breast cancer, a single dose should be an alternative to external beam radiotherapy delivered over several weeks. The long-term results published in the BMJ showed breast cancer control is comparable and there is reduced non-breast cancer mortality. And the BJC paper shows it is effective in all ductal subtypes and improved survival if grade one or two. We have provided a decision aid online in which we can see which patients should need whole breast radiotherapy afterwards. It's about 20% of the cases. We have found local relapse after target IORT has better prognosis than EBRT, and that target reduces non-breast cancer mortality even when additionally EBRT is given. So this news came, uh, came on headlines in the Times, and we shared the page with uh, Joe Biden uh, above the fold in the Times. If you're interested, please scan this and give your um, email or contact details on this form so I can come back to you uh, to discuss in more detail. So you can scan this. It will take you to this form. Um, uh, you can do this or you can contact Rishi or uh, Rachel. There is evidence that external beam radiotherapy causes perfusion defects within six months. So what we have found is consistent with previous data. And this is really important in patients who smoke. And this study comes from Ox Ox Oxford, the early breast cancer trialist group, where they found 23% smokers who have external beam radiotherapy die because of heart attacks of lung cancer. They just don't get it, they die. And this is a 6% increase. And a 6% increase can never be uh, achieved, uh, be compensated by an improvement in survival. For that, you'll need a 24% reduction in breast cancer deaths. So I believe it is unethical not to offer target IORD to eligible patients who are smokers. What is important to recognize is that target A is a typical cohort of breast killings. Large number of patients were young. They were younger than 70. There are large number of patients with grade three positive nodes or ER negative tumors. Much higher risk than other trials of BBI. I will compare this with the PRIME2 data now. PRIME2 had a very low risk patients 
So they had nobody under grade, very few under grade two, no one, no one note positive, no one was ER negative. They were highly selected for good prognosis. Despite this, local control at 10 years was 10%, which is not a small amount really. And perhaps it led to a uh, cancellation of reduction in non-breast cancer mortality in that trial. And we have seen how much different target A is compared with uh, prime two. And there's a significant reduction in mortality. Fast forward is medium risk patients, very similar to target A. Breast cancer control is comparable to three weeks CBRT, but there is still scattered irradiation to vital organs and no reduction in mortality. It also has reported that 25% patients report having a hardened and firm breast. This is not what we see with our normal radiotherapy techniques. And this breast in duration is 19 times higher compared with standard radiotherapy by physician assessment. And we don't have longer term data and we believe radiation toxicity of this thing might get even worse. Target A had very similar type of population and the, the recurrence, the, it is very good in terms of breast cancer control and lower toxicity, less travel and so many more benefits. So I think fast forward is actually backward because it's giving radiotherapy to the whole breast in these patients. Now, other forms of radiotherapy have been compared in a paper in British Journal of Cancer, which I will give you the uh, reference for. The brachytherapy is not practiced much, but if you show patients this figure, uh, patients may really not want to go for this, and it is done post-operatively over five days. External beam radiotherapy has higher toxicity. It is well reported that five fractions uh, given as partial breast in the rapid and, import, and, um, and the B NSABP has higher toxicity, and it still has scattered irradiation to vital organs, which, which, which is, uh, these problems are not there with target IRT. You can scan this to get to this paper published in the Journal of Cancer, which has compared this in detail in a big table. There have been other studies uh, which have, these are other letters which were published uh, in the Red Journal and in the Nature Reviews Clinical Oncology. And other people around the world have published independent data which shows how uh, centers in the US have got similar local recurrence rates. This is real world data from China. This is from Russia. And this is from um, France where three centers with long term follow up found similar results as target A. And this is four centers in Europe, which have again reported a local recurrence rate similar to target A. It can be done with oncoplastic surgery, which is really a very good thing because we know exactly what to give radiotherapy for. And this paper shows how it can be done and with good precision and immediacy of intraoperative radiotherapy. So this is the conclusion that target IORT, we have gone through this conclusion already, good comparable local control, better outcome in terms of overall survival in certain patients, the majority of patients, and less toxicity. First time I talked about this was in San Antonio in 2012, and we have had user meetings around the world, in Germany mainly, uh, in Mannheim, US, where more and more people have using this. And uh, this was in 2017, 2018, and 19, after which we had the one just before the pandemic hit in uh, New Orleans in the US. And this paper, this slide is important for you to look at. Each of these dots represents one center who is who has offered target IORT to their patients. And I asked each of them how many patients they are treated, and the total came to 45,000. That was in October last year. So at least 45,000 patients have received target IORT around the world. And what is uh, not nice is that it was started here, but we are not yet slow to adopt. And they've all increased the number of patients during COVID. Sir Michael Marmot recommended using target IRT for screen detected patients. And this was back in 2013 when our paper was published. And NICE recommended it in 2014, uh, draft recommendation. They tweeted it in 2017 and it received widespread publicity, but there was objection from Royal College of Radiologists. Uh, I am not going to go into detail the reasons, but um, uh, it was rejected and in 2018, it was recommended in centers that have the equipment and expertise while waiting from long-term results. So these are the benefits which we have all seen. Now, what could be the disadvantage? And this was written eloquently by the editor-in-chief of the Red Journal. He said, depending on your perspective, intraoperative radiotherapy is either a very serious threat or a quantum leap forward. And the only downside people can think of is if payment for this is made by activity rather than by value. In that case, nobody is going to lose any income or job loss because of this. And in UK now, it is the law that 
we have to inform patients about target IORT. Not informing them breaks the law as per the Montgomery uh, Convention. I will leave you with this uh, Eight years patient. Ago, I was diagnosed with early stage breast cancer. I had it for two months only before I was cured. I had target IORT at the same time as the operation to remove the cancer. I spent one night in hospital and I was back at work within days. No pain at any time, no complications, no scarring. I can't even tell where on my breast the surgery was and no recurrence, eight years. And that isn't just me being lucky. Studies show that my experience is similar to that of other women who've had Target. I am so happy I was able to have this treatment. So this video was sent by the patient and her daughter took this video during the pandemic. And I do believe that it is uh, really important for this to be offered more widely in the UK. Um, I'll end in the last, do I have one or two minutes, uh, Rishi? Uh, no, you have, you have. Just, yeah, a, yeah. just two slides. This is because I put these slides after I heard Martin speaking. Uh, this talk was about Target A trial, which has long completed recruitment and we have just showed you results. Target Boost trial is currently recruiting and is open for new centers. And I would love it if um, uh, we have more centers coming from Blankshire. Uh, it can be used during the boost, as I said, and it seems to improve survival. Target B is for young, younger patients who are younger than 45 or those older than 45 at very high risk of local relapse or after new adjuvant chemotherapy. So after new adjuvant chemotherapy and under 45 would be excluded as for target A standard treatment because that was what the exclusion criteria were. So these patients, we are randomly allocating study arm to receive target boost during surgery so that the boost is given at the right time at the right place whereas the standard arm gets the standard boost afterwards. And many times this is after the chemotherapy, so there is delay as well. The primary outcome is local control and secondary outcome is survival. And perhaps this is the place where we may see the effect of f um, effect of intraoperative radiotherapy during the trauma of surgery, countering those effects. This is included in the NIHR managed recovery scheme. I found out about this only last week. And the NIHR managed recovery scheme is the, is the scheme which is, it is included in that list because they want to promote the studies which may complete recruitment within the next year and a half and promote new centers or centers who want to do it uh, as much as possible. Why I say that is because out of the 1796, 1,414 patients were already randomized as of last week from 38 centers in UK, Europe, USA, Korea, China, uh, Middle East and South Africa. We recruited 37 patients even during COVID times because patients wanted at least one week of their treatment. So I would urge it if it's possible, if you want to increase the portfolio and patients have the benefit of this, you would have benefit of standard care for some patients and taking part in this randomized clinical trial, which is funded, badged NIHR trial. Thank you.